Let's bring in our headliner uh, for the hour today. Uh, he's Jeremy Siegel, professor of the Wharton School. Professor, it's good to have you back. Uh, anytime there's a read on inflation, we love to have you um, because you've, yeah. you've claimed the Fed is done raising rates. Yeah. What's your read on what we got today on CPI? It was very, it was good. And I mean, actually, the whisper number was much worse than some of the consensus numbers. And I was a little bit worried, but it actually came in at or below. And when I, I looked at the data, you know, if you take out the rent and the owner occupied uh, uh, rent, which is from home ownership, uh, really, we do have that core inflation down to the 2% level. Uh, we know the tremendous lag in, in that housing sector will play itself out in the second half of this year. Uh, in fact, some of the things that were even higher now, uh, some of the uh, more current data on use prices, which did jump, are actually down in the in the last few weeks. Uh, we have gasoline down 4.5% from the high that it, it hit in the middle of April. Uh, so that might actually cause further display. I mean, I think... You know, I, I think the Fed is done, but I agree with everyone on the panel. I think the fear of recession is an overhang, and I worry, is the Fed, once it sees those signs, if it does, will they respond fast enough? I mean, the bar is high for raising rates. Um, for the Fed, the bar is really high for lowering them. I, I say you need to see a negative payroll number and I wouldn't be surprised to see one in the fall. And let's see how the Fed does then. That, I think that's the worry. Otherwise, I, I think I think this market is is quite well priced. Uh, you know, I believe that P/E ratios should be 19 and 20, uh, and I think it, they're lower because of the fact that uh, uh, that fear of recession uh, and the Fed not reacting on the other side is is a, a source of concern. Would you agree that the bar is much higher for lowering rates than it is for, for raising them again? Well, I, I, the, bar for, uh, but I, the bar for raising rates, we have, we have one down, two to go. I mean, today's data was good. We have one more CPI report, and then that, uh, the, the employment report that uh, you know, will come out for the month of May. So uh, I, 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 unless both of those are super hot, you're not going to get a, a rise in June. The trends I see long term with the rent and owner uh, equivalent rent playing in on the downside of the second half of this year will make the official statistics look good. So, I, you know, I think the bar is high. Don't forget, let, let's face the facts. We have really not seen how this banking crisis is impinging on lending. Yes, we 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 do. You know, we I don't believe there's going to be a banking crisis or run on the banks. The the Fed, the Fed is there for deposits, but the you know the sluice report, the restrictions on lending, they're going to be playing themselves out May, June, uh, May, July, June, July, August, in the forward. We're going to see those then. How much of that restriction in lending is right. going to slow down but economic activity and cause? negative payroll growth. What happens if the, the regional bank issue wasn't the last shoe to drop? And on that note, I want you to listen, Professor, to what Stanley Druckenmiller had to say yesterday at the Sone conference on that very issue we'll discuss on the other side. When you have free money, um, people do stupid things. When you have free money for 11 years, people do really stupid things. So there's stuff under the hood. It's starting to emerge. Obviously, the regional banks, recently we had Bed Bath & Beyond. But I would assume there's a lot more bodies coming. How would you respond to that? Well, I, you know, I, you know what, what I've said and, and what I've said on this show is the big failure was the free money and, and uh, right after the pandemic when they were pumping trillions of dollars of stimulus into the economy. The, that was the problem. I don't have problem with the pre-pandemic monetary policy. I mean, you know, we had one and a half to two percent inflation, pretty good growth, great stock market. It, it, all the problems started with all the fiscal stimulus that was totally financed by printing money causing all this inflation, a, a very late wrong read by the Federal Reserve.